Few athletes are truly unique, changing the way their sport is played with their singular skills. Irvin Magic Johnson was one of them. Just how great a basketball player was Johnson? So great, perhaps that future generation of hoop fans may wish they had entered the world years earlier, just so they could have seen Magic play in person instead of watching him only on highlight reels. He was what Bob Cousy was to the 1950s, what Oscar Robertson was to the 1960s, what Julius Irving was to the 1970s. Still, Irvin Johnson was even more than a revolutionary player, who at 6'9 was the tallest point guard in NBA history when he entered the the league. His sublime talent elicited wonder and admiration from even the most casual basketball fan. Whether it was behind the back pass to a streaking James Worthy, a half-court swish at the buzzer, or a smile that illuminated an arena, everyone who saw Johnson play took with them an indelible memory of what they had witnessed. From the moment he stepped onto the court, people pondered, how could a man so big do so many things with the ball and with his body? It was magic. Johnson accomplished virtually everything a player could dream of during his 13-year NBA career, all of which was spent with the Los Angeles Lakers. He was a member of five championship teams. He won the Most Valuable Player Award and the Finals MVP Award three times each. He was a 12-time All-Star and a nine-time member of the All-NBA First Team. He surpassed Robertson's career assist record, a mark that he later relinquished to John Stockton. He won a gold medal with the original Dream Team at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, and Magic was highly praised among the NBA league. The GOAT Michael Jordan himself said that Magic was the most unselfish player to play the game of basketball. Jordan fielded numerous questions about great players during his interview with Cigar Aficionado. For instance, he named Moses Malone as the best rebounder of all time. And interestingly, he picked former Milwaukee Bucks shooting guard Brian Winters as the player with the smoothest shooting stroke. Soon, the conversation came to the question of unselfish players. Jordan's interviewer specifically defined most unselfish as a real team guy who put himself second, third, last, whatever, and only cared about helping his team win. At first, Jordan hedged saying that one could think a lot of players like that in the pros. From there, he quickly narrowed down his selection. But to pick one, who would have the biggest impact on a game where you had a chance to win? That would be Magic Johnson. It's no secret that Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson had their fair share of fierce battles on the hardwood during their heydays in the NBA. For a long stretch, they were undoubtedly the top two players in the league, and their cutthroat competitiveness was clearly displayed. Well, apparently, despite being retired for years now, MJ and Magic still like to talk smack to each other. A few moments ahead of the NBA Top 75 Greatest Players Ceremony, the two league icons shared a friendly banter backstage. That's old dog. It's always cool to see NBA legends get together, especially with Jordan and Magic, who can still command a room with their larger-than-life personality. In case you're wondering, Jordan won his head-to-head -head with Magic 11-7, including 4-1 in the NBA playoffs. MJ, however, has always credited Magic for making him better and paving the way for him and other superstars. Not bad at all for an old dog. Even Kareem Abdul-Jabbar put his pride to the side when it came to playing with Magic Johnson. He even taught him how to do his famous skyhook move. Johnson quickly matched mastered his own version of the shot, which he used to make the game-winning basket and the Game 4 victory at the Garden 107-106. to That win propelled the Lakers to a second finals win over the Celtics in three years. A basketball team is much like a family, said Abdul-Jabbar per UPI in August 1981. And when one member has been singled out, oftentimes other people in that family can become jealous. If you have jealousy, everyone cannot be working towards the same goal. I would also like to point out that salary was not even mentioned during the meeting. I have always had an intense desire to win, but the atmosphere here cannot be conducive toward that goal. However, after my meeting with my boss this afternoon, the rumors of my departure are premature and I look forward to ending my career with the Lakers. Had I thought it was impossible to win here, New York is my home and is the only other place I would want to play, he said, according to UPI. However, my teammates and I are looking forward to the upcoming season and winning the world championship again. Lakers owner Jerry Buss said before Abdul-Jabbar met with the team, he offered the center a raise to $1.5 million per season. Magic Johnson is getting $1 million a year for 25 years starting in 1984, Buss said. Abdul-Jabbar has to be paid more. He's the best player in the NBA. I would welcome several more seasons at $1.5 million. How many? As many are as reasonable. If he wants more years, that will be fine, he said. 
I checked with coach Paul Westhead. He says Kareem can be effective for many more years. Although it may have seemed like the Lakers were wildly throwing cash at their two stars back then, it certainly was money well spent. Kareem couldn't have won all those championships without Magic, which is why he has such high respect for him. James Worthy, Magic's former Lakers teammate, said that he would pick Magic over Kareem. Magic may be regarded as the best point guard of all time, but when talking about the greatest players in general, Kareem's name gets mentioned more. The leading scorer in NBA history, six-time champion, and a true icon, Kareem has a respectable GOAT case that many former players would back up. His teammate James Worthy agrees with that but he still admitted that he would always go with Magic Johnson if he had to choose. I played with Kareem, who I think is the greatest player to ever play the game. But if I had to choose one player, I would choose Magic. And here's why. Because he enhances everybody three times more than you could ever. He wills stuff. He wills games. When he has to perform, he's done it. He's a winner. When you need that guy that can will stuff, that's what he does. That's why I would choose him, said Worthy. Detroit Piston legend Isaiah Thomas has weighed in on a debate surrounding Magic Johnson's ability to compete in the modern NBA. Isaiah believes Johnson would have still performed at an incredibly high level, but just not as a guard. I think there are some players in the 80s that couldn't play in this era, and I think it's because of the rules. Magic Johnson would have probably played center in this era. Magic Johnson probably wouldn't be running the point playing high pick and roll. Either way, Magic would have dominated today's NBA league, especially because of his passing skills. If there was one aspect of Johnson's game that awed people the most, it was his brilliant passing skills. He dazzled fans and dumbfounded opponents with no-look passes off the fast break, pinpoint alley-oops from half court, spinning feeds and overhand bullets under the basket through triple teams. When defenders expected him to pass, he shot. When they expected him to shoot, he passed. Said former Lakers swingman Michael Cooper, there have been times when he was thrown passes and I wasn't sure where he was going. Then one of our guys catches the ball and scores. And I run back up the floor convinced that he must have thrown it through somebody. In the Los Angeles Times, Westhead said of his amazing rookie, we all thought he was a movie star player, but we found out he wears a hard hat. It's like finding a great orthopedic surgeon who can also operate a bulldozer. During the 1986-87 season with Abdul-Jabbar sidelined briefly with an eye infection, Johnson did something most pro scouts had said he couldn't do, score. He pumped in 38 points against Houston and then a career-high 46 points in the next game against the Sacramento Kings. His 23.9 season average was the highest of his career. That season, Johnson was named NBA Most Valuable Player. It had taken him eight years, in which time Bird had landed three MVP awards. Johnson had wanted it badly. Before the winner was announced, Johnson told the Los Angeles Times, Right now, he's three and I'm zero. That bugs me a little. He would eventually tie Bird in the MVP count, claiming the award again in 89 and 90. Before the 91-92 campaign, Johnson stunned the world with the announcement that he had tested positive for the HIV virus, and was retiring from the NBA. He made a triumphant appearance at the All-Star Game that season, however, earning the game's MVP award and leading the West to a 153-113 victory. He also began a campaign to promote AIDS awareness, an effort for which he received the league's J. Walter Kennedy Citizenship Award. In 96-97, Johnson was selected to the NBA's 50th anniversary all-time team. In 2002, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Was he the best player of his day? Another all-time great thinks so. Magic is head and shoulders above everybody else, Larry Bird once observed in the Chicago Sun-Times. I've never seen anybody as good as him. Even his biggest rival, Larry Bird, had good words to share about Magic, which speaks a lot about Magic as an NBA player. Magic Johnson retired in 1996, leaving behind one of the greatest NBA careers we have ever seen. The things he has done on the basketball court will never be repeated by another player. Simply said, there will never be another Magic Johnson.